Hey guys, it's Dr. Eric Balkavich. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today I want to talk about some of the problems with high dose T3 therapy. Um, this will probably be a series of videos and we'll go through these. If you have questions uh, about taking T3 therapy, especially high dose T3 therapy, uh, definitely put the comments below the, this video or the future videos in this series so that I can maybe do another video on maybe your question regarding T3 therapy. So let me get through some basics in this video, kind of talk about what's going on. So uh, as most of you most of you know, if, if, you, if you have chronic hypothyroid symptoms, you read the blogs or you, you've been diagnosed as hypothyroidism uh, and you're on medication, uh, you have this thing called your thyroid gland. It makes T4 primarily, uh, but it also does make some T3. It makes some other thyroid hormones and some other things as well. But primarily T4, the, the circulating reserve hormone uh, is primarily made in the thyroid gland, okay? Uh, then the thyroid gland also makes something called T3, which is the primary active hormone but it doesn't make that much. A very small percent is made by the thyroid gland. The rest of the T3, and it's how much T3 you make, is based on demand, based on body size, number of things, but let's say it's about 30 to maybe 50 micrograms of T3 is made per day. Five to 10 micrograms of that might be made at the thyroid gland. All of the rest of the T3 in the body is made by cells bringing T4 in converting that T4 to T3 inside the cells, using that T3 for a period of time, and then releasing that T3 back out into the bloodstream where it can be used by another tissue before it's finally metabolized, okay? So that's a really important point. Almost all, most of the T3 in circulation that's in the body is not made by the thyroid gland, it's made by the peripheral tissue. So keep that in mind. Another important point is that all the different tissues of the body, liver, adre adrenal gland, uh, kidneys, uh, brain, pituitary, thyroid, hypothalamus, all these tissues are able to, to regulate their metabolism independently of the other tissues, which is really important because we don't, when we want the metabolism of the GI tract up, like, up regulated, we don't necessarily need the metabolism of my muscle tissue upregulated or uh, my spleen upregulated, right? So we want the tissues to be able to independently control their metabolism. So all the different tissues regulate differently. So when you put thyroid hormone into the bloodstream, it doesn't mean every system's metabolism turns on at the same time. That's really important. And the tissue can regulate its metabolism to some degree independently of, or of the thyroid gland, independently of how much thyroid hormone the thyroid gland is making to some degree. Um, it can regulate it independently of how much thyroid hormone T4 and T3 is in the bloodstream. So just because you have normal amounts of T4 or T3 in the bloodstream doesn't mean that, that the tissue has a optimized amount of T3 inside it. Okay. Remember, it's T3 inside the cell that does most of the work. So you could have normal uh, thyroid hormone T4, T3 in the bloodstream, but have a hypo or hyperthyroid state at the tissue level. Okay. Um, hypo and hyperthyroid symptoms are the result of what's happening inside the cells of tissues. It's independent sometimes of what's going on at other cells and tissues and potentially independent of what's going on in the bloodstream, okay? So if I'm a, if I'm a cell or a tissue and I need to down-regulate my metabolism, uh, then I can reduce the amount of T3 inside my cells, uh, even though the, the amount of T4 or T3 in the bloodstream is normal, okay? So you could truly have hypothyroid or hyperthyroid symptoms even though TSH, T4, and T3 look like they're in the normal range. Um, what we experience often with, we see problems in, or changes in thyroid physiology is not broken physiology. I think that is too often what we assume that, oh, my, my body just forgot how to work all of a sudden. I think what we see pretty typically in the body is adaptive changes to some type of excessive stress response. Um, emotional stress, physical stress, organisms, uh, toxins, 
the body says, whoa, I need to slow down my metabolism as a result of. And we get signs and symptoms, but that's not broken physiology. It's adaptive physiology to whatever that stressor is. Um, so let me give you some scenarios. If you get, if you look at your blood work, we're not, we're going to keep TSH out of this for the moment because TSH can be influenced by a whole bunch of things. But let's say you're, whether you're taking medication or not taking medication, your T4 is, is low or normal. Uh, T3 is, let's say this is a person who's, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Let's say it's low or normal. T3 is low, reverse T3 is low. Uh, this is somebody who's developing glandular dysfunction or has glandular dysfunction. So if you haven't been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you have hypothyroid signs and symptoms, and you get a, more than a TSH and free T4 done, and you see that your T4 is normal, maybe your TSH is normal, your T3 is low, your reverse T3 is low, this is somebody whose gland is not making enough thyroid hormone. Uh, and so T3 is low and reverse T3 is low. So there's not enough T4 in circulation getting to the tissues to convert into T3 or to reverse T3. So this is somebody that we have to be concerned that they're developing a glandular problem. If T4 is normal, T3 is low, but reverse T3 is high or high normal, this is a person who's got more of this adaptive change going on with the body saying, hey, we need to slow metabolism down at a number of tissues. So more T4 is getting converted to reverse T3, less is getting converted to T3. And this is where problems start, especially in functional medicine, because some physicians will see the low T3, the high reverse T3, and tell a client that the reverse T3 is blocking T3 from binding to the receptors inside the cells, and that's what's causing their hypothyroid signs and symptoms. And that is not true based on the science. And so T3, reverse T3 does not block T3 actions. What happens is deionase 3 is the enzyme that converts T4 to reverse T3 and something has caused that to upregulate. It's usually inflammatory mechanisms. Hypoxia, inflammation will increase this enzyme called deionase 3 and you'll get more T4 to reverse T3. Now there's an enzyme called deionase 2 that does, does most of the conversion of T4 to T3 and so what will happen is sometimes in those same situations, there's, there still might be some increased deionase 2 action there as a result of that stress response, but there's more deionase 3 occurring and that's driving up this reverse T3. So this is typically result of cell stress and adaptive changes. This is, some people say, well, you have a polymorphism where the gene doesn't uh, allow you to make uh, deionase 2 appropriately, so you can't convert T4 to T3. Uh, that's typically not the case, okay? If you're just, if you're 30 and you started developing hypothyroid signs and symptoms, you've had that polymorphism the better part of your life. It's not the gene itself, but something is t telling that genetic, that changing that genetic expression. And it's usually the stressors we're talking about. It's not a selenium deficiency. I'll hear people say the reason you can't do that is because you have selenium deficiency. Well, look, if you have enough selenium to convert T4 to reverse T3, that deionase 3 needs selenium, then you get enough selenium to convert T4 to T3. The difference between which one the body makes is based on the type of stress response of the tissues. Um, talked about that. So when you get T3 therapy, so a lot of people say, hey, I started, I did, wasn't, didn't feel that good on T4. I started on T3, I felt better. Uh, and then they start to plateau and then they need a stronger dose. And so what I see happening, people coming to see me is, they're now on high dose T3 only and feel awful, or they're on a combination of high T4 and T4 and high T3. Uh, and I've got a person right now that's making about two, to, they're taking about two to three times the amount of T3 that the body would ever make for their size, and they still feel hypothyroid. And we'll get into the videos why, but you might feel temporarily improve some symptoms, but it'll typically plateau and then you'll need a stronger dose and a stronger dose. It might improve your T3 and free T3 in the bloodstream, depending on when you do take your labs, how far from the time you did the blood draw that you took your T3 medication, but um, it might not either. It may look low and worse taking T3, and there's reasons I'll talk about that in another video. You might see a lower reverse T3, and that's because when you take a bunch of T3, you suppress TSH, so now you can't convert T4 to T3. You might have both hypo and hyperthyroid symptoms despite taking high dose T3. And the real issue here, it doesn't fix the problem. And I'm gonna talk about more of this in future videos. Put your questions below.